You may know John uh, from his singing, so he's uh, often a, a part of our choir and part of small groups like the quintet we had at Lessons and Carols. He plays the piano uh, really beautifully. He's got a, a, a little girl who's part of our kids group called Cy. Uh, he's married to Anne. And he's, you joined our community when? 20? Yeah, mid-2019. Tw mid-2019. Anne was just pregnant or... or around that time shortly after short, yeah. yeah okay yeah. so I've known you for almost the entire time we've been here which has been um, really lovely um, other people here particularly those who attend the evening service might not know much about you so give us a dating app style introduction to yourself yeah so this is this is the the biggest struggle I had with all the questions that Rad said that we we're going to ask because <laughs> when I started dating Anne I didn't even have a phone so <laughs> like, like I'm not quite sure what you're supposed to put on a dating app but I, I think I mean you summarized it pretty well um, so I, I'm married to Anne, uh, father of Cy. Um, I grew up in a tiny country town, so living in Sydney is terrifying for me. Um, I, I've sort of, I guess, been in academia my whole working life, mm -hmm. um, spent a bit of time overseas, a year in, in France, and then three and a half years in the US before coming back to, or coming back to Australia uh, and settling in Sydney. Uh, and we've been in Sydney since yeah, mid mid 2019, mm. um, and I yeah I work at the University of Sydney in the, in the physics department um, in a in a position which is uh, partially research, partially teaching, and and partially other uh, other roles. Mm. Uh, you grew up in in a I would say quite a Christian household, like Christian plus. Uh, tell us a bit about your parents, uh, particularly those who have come from a Presbyterian background. Tell us a bit about your mum. Yeah, so my, my mum and dad are uh, Joy and Arnold Bartholomew. Um, and yeah, quite a Christian household is, is a good way to describe it. So both mum and dad are Presbyterian ministers. Um, mum is the only ordained uh, female Presbyterian minister in Australia. Um, was one of five who were candidates for the ministry um, back when the Presbyterian Church had a brief period where they allowed female ministers. Um, that was overturned shortly afterwards, and so um, Mum, for a long time, has been the, the only female minister in Australia um, in the Presbyterian denomination. Um, so when, when I was born, they were um, in, in a town called Korowa, uh, and Dad was the, the, the senior minister there, and, and, and Mum was assistant, but uh, about halfway through high school, uh, Mum and Dad were called to Canberra, to the... Um, the, the large Presbyterian congregation there at St Andrews. Um, so if you've ever been to Canberra, um, the, the kind of state circle that goes around Parliament House, the big cathedral on that is the Presbyterian Church and Mum was the senior minister, uh, called to be the senior minister there and Dad was an assistant. Um, I mean, the, the, I guess the heritage goes back a little bit further. So Mum's brother is also a Presbyterian minister. Mum's father was a Presbyterian minister both, uh, and Dad's, Dad's father was an elder in the Presbyterian Church for, for over 50 years. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a bit of, a bit of, what do you say, church family? Yeah, mm. there's, a, there's a bit of church in there. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Does anyone in this room work in or know much about physics? Anyone work in that world? Okay, so with that kind of captive audience, <laughs> can you tell us a bit more about the work that you do at Sydney Uni? Yeah, I, I was just saying to people on my table, usually when I start talking about p p uh, physics, people are kind of like, oh, I have this really other important thing that I have to, <laughs> have to do. And so I was changed, like, it's a, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a casual enough setting that people can kind of sneak out without um, <laughs> offending anyone. Um, yeah, so I, I guess physics is the, the study of the natural world. Um, and I guess what we try and do is understand that uh, and come up with theories and, uh, I guess mechanisms to, to understand and then be able to predict um, the way that the world works. Mm. Um, for me, I work in, in quantum physics, so I'm an experimental quantum physicist, um, so I'm trying to build new generations of communication and computing technology based on the world at a, at a quantum scale, and so that's things like single atoms, single electrons, uh, and trying to harness the weird properties that you see when you zoom right in on, on nature at that scale. Um, and so that opens up a completely new paradigm for how to do some of those, um, those processes. Um, in the physics department, there's, there's multiple roles. And so for me, I, I span uh, all, all of those. And so one is teaching. So I, I, I teach, um, have done some teaching for first year, um, but now I'm mainly concentrating on third year and, and, and fourth year. Uh, so later, later um, or students who are later on in their degrees mm -hmm. 
Um, research is the other big component, and so I run a, a, a research lab. I, I built a lab when, when we moved to Sydney um, uh, to do this research. I have a team um, of three PhD students, uh, a full-time researcher, um, multiple honours students, so around 10 um, also manage uh, quite a few of the professional team in, in kind of our, our quantum area. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's where we're like day in, day out, we're you know, zooming in on matter at the, at the atomic level and trying to probe the, the properties of single atoms, um, trying to work out you know, what their energy structure is like and how we can harness that to do useful things, mm. which is ultimately, yeah, kind of what we're trying to do, right? It's, it's, the, it's very important for me in my research that we actually have some application to come out of it, um, but that's, that's not the case for all physicists. Some people uh, are very interested in just coming up with, you know, really interesting ways to, to view what happens if the world was in 26 dimensions rather than three. Mm. Um, like thinking about those kind of things, I, I, for me it's, it's more about um, sort of trying to be practical and, and ultimately improve people's lives. Um, the other aspect is, you know, a large organisation like the university um, is similar to any other large organisation where you have to, that, there's a lot of machinery there to actually keep it running. Um, and so there's a lot of administration and, and sort of governance type roles that, that need to be done as well. And I, I take on some of those. Hmm. Uh, in teaching and research, are there parts of your work that you enjoy more than others or is it all pretty life giving? Um, I mean, research is definitely the thing that, that got me into this field. I, I love research. I, I, I will spend hours in the lab and will spend hours talking to people who, are, <laughs> who show any kind of interest. So um, be careful. Everyone. Yeah, be careful, exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, but I mean, teaching, for me, that, that wasn't distinct from research. It's like you're always working with, uh, with people who have different levels of experience to yourself. And so there's either a learning or teaching or an exchange that's going on in the lab yeah. when, when you're trying to do that. Um, the big challenge in taking on the role that I have at Sydney Uni now is, is transitioning from that sort of pure research focus to then actually formally teaching people uh, in, in coursework and, and I found that very challenging and stressful. Mm -hmm. um, but in the same way it's, it's rewarding when you see people who grasp ideas for the first time um, or you can see that you've helped people along, along their journey. Um, also very disheartening at times when you see that you haven't quite made the connections that, mm. you, that you need to. Um, but, uh, and then a lot of the, the administrative things I find very tedious, mm -hmm. as I'm sure a lot of people do. Sure. Um, but some of, them, some of them I draw energy from because I can see the, the value of them long term. I can see that it's making a difference. Other things I feel like there's just needless mm. um, administration that you have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I thought about this month, I, you came to mind because there's a bunch of people in the congregation who work in education or social work or community organising or whatever. Um, yours is a role that I think is on maybe unusual, not unusual, but, but it's, a, it's a particular thing. So thinking about the whole month where we're talking about vocation, what do you think, what do you think it means? What, do you, what is vocation to you? Yeah, this is why I've thought a lot about this and, I mean, the the kind of definition that comes to mind does ring true to me to a certain extent in terms of really this, this calling for, for what we want to, to do and the impact that we want to have in the world. Um, but in, on, on, on the other hand, I think it, it is tied to a somewhat outdated notion that, that people are going to do one thing for their whole yeah, life. Sure. Uh, and, that's, and I think that's something that's probably changed in the last or has been a progressive change um, probably over, over my lifetime mm. in terms of it's, it's getting more and more likely now that people who enter the workforce will be changing roles much more often sure. um, than it had been previously. Um, and so I, I, was, I was thinking about that and, and I think for me the, the vocational aspect to, to your work may not actually be the job itself but the role that you take. Mm. Um, and so I, I think people come with particular particular strengths or particular, um, I guess, personality types and, uh, and, and I guess bringing their whole self to a particular role um, within their job and that can be, that can take many forms irrespective of what the job that you take. Mm -hmm. um, and so like I, in, in a lot of ways the job that I do is three distinct jobs. Teaching is very different from research which is very different to, to management and, and, and mm -hmm. governance and things like that. Um, but there's, I guess, aspects of uh, what I bring 
which is common to all of those roles. Yeah. Um, and, and I always, for me, I, I always thought that um, I'm, I'm the type of person who just will, will make things work no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I didn't really see this like, like, you know, I have to be a physicist, um, but there's elements of, you know, things that I brought to whether it was sport or music or, or, or other things that seemed to fit well in that, mm -hmm. in that career. Mm. Um, you, right, right at the beginning when I asked you about vocation, you mentioned the word impact. So do you get the sense for yourself or just generally that vocation, whether or not it changes, is somehow connected to impact on the world, impact on, I don't know, other people? I think so. Um, I, I think whether we like it or not, in, in everything that we do, we have impact. Uh, and, and so in that idea of vocation, I think for me, there's a, there's a desire to actually be conscious about, well, I, okay, I, this, is, this is my role and I, 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 can, I have a vision for how this can work and I should be, um, for me at least, it, it's thinking about okay, how, do I, how do I make things better, mm -hmm. how do I improve things for people, how do I feel, make people feel more welcome in the space, how do I, how do I actually translate what we're doing now to to be out there in the in the in the real world, mm. rather than just in the confines of a lab. Um, in the teaching, it's it's often about well, this isn't just a classroom where we're teaching you equations or, or you know how to, you know how an atom works. Like these are these are skills that you should be able to take with you um, to analyze complex problems, no mm. matter what you do. Mm. Um, so I, I think for me, uh, impact is is inevitable, and it, like being conscious actually about. Mm -hmm. um, that you are having an impact like is is helpful for me to actually think about okay well let's try and make that impact a positive sure, one sure so you are an, an academic and a teacher you're a musician a very gifted musician and you like more in school than now we're into sports are you still playing anything not no, not really it's okay. uh, as the as the academic career has taken off the sport has kind of subsided anything particular um, that you were into I, I played a lot of field hockey okay yeah. I imagine it's easier to find to to feel connections between your music and your sense of faith, your music and, and a sense of discipleship. There's there feels like, you know, it's art, so it, it makes sense. Are there ways that you can think of that your faith intersects with or even informs the work that you do? And the flip question is, do you think that your work informs your faith? So the yeah, the intersection is is definitely there. I mean, and it's not necessarily one that. Uh, is a is an uplifting experience from a faith perspective in terms of you know many I, I think it's fair to say the overwhelming majority of physicists are anti any kind of religion uh, it's a very yeah. very strong atheist community sure. um, and that's sort of founded in the in the, in the fact that physics is based on evidence and mm. it's it's deliberately not faith based um, it's it's repeatable it's it's testing hypotheses. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I mean, I've sat through lectures where the, the lecturer has, has, like, spent the whole session giving examples of where the Christian church has gone wrong in, in predictions they've made and, mm. and why it's been a negative impact on the world. Um, in general, I think people are very surprised when they, when they find out that, that I'm a Christian. Um, and I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what it means to be a Christian. Sure. Um, I mean, for, for me, the, the biggest intersection that I found, which is, I think has been surprising since I took on this role at the University of Sydney, is, is actually from the, the people perspective. Like one reason I got into physics was that I was like, well, the worst comes to the worst, like I can't harm the atoms, like they're, they're, they're there. They're like, just gonna be there, right? yeah. It's, it's, it's like, I'm always amazed by people who, who work with you know, actual humans. Um, in improving their, like, in a, in a more direct way in terms of medicine or, or you know, psychology or things mm, like this. Mm. Um, but, yeah, more and more I see in my role as, like, the, the, it's, it's impossible to escape the, the impact that you're having on people. Um, and I feel that there it, it, it's actually the, my faith informs the way that I interact with people, mm. um, the way I respond to particular, certain, uh, particular situations. Mm. Um, and it also helps me through in, in you know, really challenging situations. Um, and so I, I think all the lessons that I've, that I've learnt from, from, from 
you know, having a relationship with God all these years, um, you know, I bring to bear on those kind of those kind of situations, mm. and I, I like I hope that it that it helps me, you know, help people in in doing good research as well sure. as you know, other things that they're doing. Uh, whether my work informs my faith, I mean, I think <laughs> that's also kind of kind of yeah for granted as well in mm. terms of yeah it's i mean it's very easy to think as a christian that if i pray hard enough the experiment will work um <laughs> and Does that, that is, work no or? it doesn't <laughs> no um um yeah it's so it's it's interesting like it, i guess from the perspective of the 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 testing and actually questioning things i think has been really helpful um i think the that's probably helped me grow in a lot of ways as well in terms of I, I'm someone, as I said, like I'm someone who will try and make things work no matter what the situation is, no matter like where I'm placed. Um, and that often means that I just like take things as they are. Sure. Um, and so I think the, the research has actually helped me you know, actually think about or, you know, is, is that, mm -hmm. is the way that I'm thinking about this actually correct? What assumptions am I making? What, what biases am I bringing to this? Mm. Um, and so I think, I think that's been, mm -hmm. that's been helpful. Mm -hmm. Do you ever find yourself, say you're zooming in on, on matter, do you find yourself thinking more existentially about, man, this is part of creation and, you know, the intricacy and all that kind of stuff? Like, do you find yourself... Yeah, it's, it, you know, I, I do. Um, I try not to spend a lot of time thinking about that because it's very easy to, to get lost in that. Sure. Um, but, I mean, there are just some... I mean, there's, there's things where it's like when you see something that's never been reported before... Yeah. There's that sense of wonder. It's like I like I'm literally the first human being to ever see this. Pretty cool. Uh, and, until you go and do a literature review and you find that some Russian back in the 1970s Damn have already it. done it. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, no, th there are those moments where you're like, e even if it's a really small result, you're like, well, no one, no one has ever done this before. It's pretty cool. Um, and so we're seeing something new about the the way that the world works that um, hasn't been out there before. Um, I guess the other thing is that I find remarkable is, is, is like even if things were different by you know a tiny fraction of percent, like we, we wouldn't be living in the world that we're living 100%, in, yeah, um, yeah. and that that's quite amazing. Yeah. Uh, and the I guess the the common uh, or one one of the theories behind you know why that is is that there's just a a multitude of different universes where everything is kind of slightly different mm. and we just happen to be living in one of them. Mm. Um, I, yeah, I, I find that a very troubling um, hypothesis because it, it kind of makes me feel meaningless and, and worthless. Um, but yeah, no, there, there's definitely, definitely those moments where you're like, okay, that, like, this, is, mm. this is pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, I, I try not to think ab about that too much because um, it, it it is very easy to, to go down those roads and mm. weeks later you're like, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> what was I doing? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like I, should, yeah. I should fix the laser. Yeah. <laughs> you, when we were talking about vocation before, you mentioned the kind of outdated view that of a singular vocation or a singular, you know, path. Do you think that your own sense of vocation has already changed in the 30-something years of your life? Like, did you, when you were a kid, did you know that this is what you wanted to go into? So just on the, on, on the premise of the question, I, it's not necessarily outdated, okay. but like maybe the, the, the concept that that's the only path. Yeah. Um, yeah. Certainly for people, I think it's like you wake up one day and you're like, I'm going to be a this, and then like that, that's, that's perfect. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely it changed. I, I, don't, I don't think being an academic was on my radar when I was growing up. I grew up in a tiny country town. I thought I'd be an, an electrician. Mm. Um, and yeah, like wasn't particularly good at maths. Uh, and moved to Canberra and had a few experiences where it was kind of like, oh, okay, that's the way maths works. And um, didn't really know what I wanted to do through high school um, and in the end went into physics because I was really dissatisfied with the HSC physics course. Oh, um, you felt like... I, I felt know. like I didn't know physics in the, yeah. in the course. There was one calculation I did in my HSC physics exam. I can still remember the question. Um, and so I was like, oh, I'm really interested in this, but I don't feel like I got to do any of it. Mm. So... Um, then did physics at uni and then one thing led to another and here I am. Yeah. Do you feel like the love grew as you kept studying it? Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah like I, I, can, I can point to a moment, in, well, a couple of moments and like one of them, 
uh, you know, I, I, was, I was doing a third year atomic and laser physics course and we had a guest lecturer, oh sorry, guest uh, examiner for our end of year exams and I'd done a project on making holograms and, and this, this guest examiner was like, oh, I make 4D holograms in my lab. And I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. You should come and see it. So I, I went and visited his lab uh, and he showed me liquid helium for the first time. Mm. Uh, and so, I mean, brief diversion into liquid helium. So, you know, like, w this is amazing. So, like, liquid helium is a special type of liquid uh, that can go what's called superfluid. Mm. Um, so if you imagine, like, boiling water, it's quite turbulent, right? There's bubbles going all through it. Uh, when helium boils, it boils at a temperature about four degrees above absolute zero. When, when helium boils, it, it looks like that. It looks, exactly looks like boiling water. But if you drop the, the, the pressure just a little bit and the temperature drops as well, then it stops. Even though it's still boiling, it goes completely still. Mm. It's like the most pristine like, uh, uh, volume of liquid that you've ever seen. Mm. So it's like in, in the special devices that we use to cool things down called cryostats, um, the particular type that we were working with in the lab it had a window, so you can sort of send a laser beam through it. And you could look at the, this liquid like boiling away and then the temperature would drop and then it'd just go completely calm and you'd just see this perfect meniscus mm. like in the window. And yeah, I was like, oh, I can do that. Like, sign me up, what do I do? Like, <laughs> like, so that was a real moment. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, yeah. like there's, there's a few moments like that um, where I was like, yeah, this is, this is incredible. And mm. like, pr prior to that, I'd been a bit more on the theory side of things. Um, and struggling away, um, and then yeah, sort of got more into the experiments, and yeah. I was like, yeah, this is this is really fun. So you meant, you know, you went into physics because you wanted to, to learn more, and, and doors kept opening up, and, and here you are now. Do you feel a sense of call to what you're doing, or is it that you found it and there's love in it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I I I, I don't. Yeah, I mean, this, this was informing, I guess, what I, what I said earlier in terms of I've never felt a particular call to do physics. Mm. Uh, as I said, I, I've, like, growing up where I did, I, like, I feel like I could have is easily become a shearer and would have had a very happy life, mm. like, shearing sheep. Um, the, I, I think what I, I do find a, a bit more of an aspect of call is, like, the roles that I take within that. Okay. Uh, and so... Yeah, w as hard as I fight it, like I often end up in positions of leadership and being able to influence things. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's like when you talk to Anne, and she'll constantly say that we're constantly having discussions about I should say no to more things, okay. and but the, the, these things still sort of keep coming up, and uh, and and things sort of generally tend to go well. So I think that that has been a bit of a calling in terms mm. of like taking on those you know, guiding roles or mentoring roles mm. or um, sort of, you know, governance roles in some of these organisations. And then taking a step out of um, the university work that you do, what are some other ways that you're, you live out your faith in your life? So I, I think it, it's mainly in, in the expression of it is, is, is the luck community. Okay. Um, in terms of try and, try and be active here uh, and, and contribute where I can. Mm. Um, and I, I guess just with family as well, um, trying, to, trying to be a good dad, uh, trying to be a good husband, um, you know, son, mm. you know, in, in that kind of respect too. Mm -hmm. um, at, at the, I was thinking at that, like at the moment, that's kind of, that, that's, that's the sum total. Like the it's work okay. is pretty, pretty yeah. all-encompassing. Yeah, so, sure. um, uh, and I, I guess just being conscious that, as I said, like impact is is unavoidable, and so just being being aware in in all sorts of situations mm. that like you, you are having an impact on people, or you can influence situations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you found luck in 2019. My my final question is like, why is luck your home, and what's your vision for this church? So when when we moved to Sydney. Anne and I took the same strategy as what we'd taken in, in other parts of the world where we looked for churches that had a similar, I guess, liturgy to what we'd been, uh, both of us grew up in the Presbyterian church and so that, that kind of service and liturgy um, was something that we felt very comfortable with. Mm. Um, having or knowing the Presbyterian church in Australia, we, we kind of felt that it wasn't a very good 
match for, for how we viewed Christianity anymore. Okay. Um, and so we, we knew the Uniting Church was, was a possibility. Uh, so we, we then, you know, <laughs> drew, drew radiuses around where we were living <laughs> and said, okay, well, you know, where should we, where should we look? And so luck was the, the, the first one that we, that we came to. And we, tried, we, we looked at a few other congregations uh, around and you know, went, went to a few of the Anglican churches as well. Um, and, I mean, it, it, you know, similar to other congregations that we've been a part of, it just felt very comfortable. Mm. Um, I mean, there was very nice links in terms of having grown up with, with two parents who are who are ministers, like seeing the team ministry. Um, I, I think that's a, that's a really powerful thing. And in some ways a better reflection of actually what ministry is, is like to have a minister and then the minister's partner is, and to not give them a role mm. always seems quite weird to yeah, me because yeah. they're, they're, they're always there, they're always doing things anyway. Um, and so to actually have that formally, I think was quite good. Um, the music is, is important to both of us and so that was great. Um, and kind of having that nice mix of the, the tradition with the, with the more modern aspects. Um, and v- very powerful to be part of a congregation that's, you know, out there actually trying to have an impact and, 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 and make a change. Um, and as I said, for me, as someone who's just quite comfortable to, well, not necessarily comfortable, but, you know, hesitant to be an agitator or to, to push for change, mm. I, I like the challenge that this congregation brings in terms of highlighting things that maybe I haven't thought about before or I've thought about and, and want to be a part of. Mm. Um, and so, I mean, that's, that's, I, I think one of the reasons why, why we've stayed and it's been very welcoming as well, um, and very supportive. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, I, I think we, we had a pretty challenging time during COVID, um, with Sai coming along mm-hmm. and, and yeah, the, the support of the congregation, we, we very much appreciated. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the, a lot of aspects there all kind of tied up into, yeah, we really love coming here and we love the, the community. Um, in terms of the vision, I, I mean, I, I feel hesitant to, to, to put my vision out there because in many ways I still feel somewhat of a guest in the community um, in terms of, uh, you know, it's even though we're, we're involved and we do things, I, I see a lot of remarkable people who, whose, whose input I, I, would, I would take more stock in rather than my own. Mm. Um, but I, I guess it for me, I, I think there's a chance to to really for, for luck to be something very powerful. And I, I think I've said this to you before, Rads, yeah. um, in terms of there's not many congregations that will go out on a limb like like luck does um, and to be so outward looking while still sort of doing like a very good job at maintaining its own congregation. Um, I think it's a a lot of the issues that luck stands up for are things that are consistent with what Jesus would teach um, and I think are issues that have been overall forgotten ignored neglected by the by the church um, and I think more people need to hear that as mm-hmm. I said that the, the biggest I, I find in in, in in talking with with non-christians or, or people from other faith backgrounds a lot of the discussion goes along or along the lines of correcting um, uh, misconceptions yeah. about what it is to be a Christian yeah. and the fact that people don't don't realize that it's it's such a broad um, you know people have have a, a broad range of views mm. uh, and I mean it, it's I mean most of what we do in teaching physics is also correcting misconceptions as well but mm. um, the uh, yeah I, I think for me, there's, it's, it's a realisation that actually there is something very powerful here. And I mean, I've had conversations with, with people who are like, oh, well, there's, there's other, other congregations who are doing things. There's other, other organisations that are active in these spaces. But I, I think just realising the, the impact that people, come, uh, or people have in this space. Um, I don't know, for me, it's like any time I hear someone... Um, who says, you know, I can, I can bring my whole self to church. That's, I mean, that's quite amazing. Mm. Um, and something that's rare, I think, in, in, in the churches that I've been to. Mm. Um, and that's, that's not, 
uh, and, and that, that goes across, you know, all, all the, the demographic categories. I think a lot of people feel like they have to leave a whole bunch of themselves at the front door yeah. so that they're not struck by lightning as they, as they enter. Yeah. Um, and so I, I feel that that realness is, is actually very powerful and, and can be used to, to be outward looking mm. to, to really have transformational impacts. And I don't know, maybe, maybe it's because of the, the roles that I'm in at the moment, but um, I, I, I don't see why that, that impact should be, should be local mm -hmm. or even that. I mean, like this is, this is something that I think that, you know, Australia needs. So yeah. I, 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 I don't know, I, I think there's, there's a lot of scope for luck being a leader in that, um, in a lot of these things. Mm. Does anyone here have any questions for John? Yeah, Laura. So I, I started learning the piano when I was when I was eight. Uh, so it was, it was something my like when mum and dad were picking hymns. Like dad has a has a like an old recorder that he'd kind of like would work out is this the tune I want or not. And mum <laughs> just has them all memorised. Um, but they were always like you should you should learn music so that you can at least sit down and, and play a tune. So it started it started there, and um, so I, I learnt most of the way through through high school and sort of did the, the exams and all those kind of things. Um, and then, it, you know, since high school, it's mainly been playing in church settings. Um, yeah, have, have dabbled in other instruments, um, but yeah, like piano was one of those things. When we were in the US, the university I was at had like music studios where you could kind of lock yourself in a soundproof room that was only just bigger than a piano. That's, that was kind of my happy place. That's like, <laughs> just, nobody just, can hear you know, me. No one can hear me. It's like I'm completely shut off from that, yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's always, I've, I've always enjoyed playing in, in the church settings. Um, mm. And you just happen, like you've just always had a pretty solid voice as well? Like that's just been part of your life? Um, I, yeah, I mean, I always wanted, when I was little and the, and the church had a very small choir, I always wanted to join, I think, much to the annoyance of, like, the older congregants. Um, and they're like, oh, well, he's the minister's kid, we better let him join. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess, like, did, uh, did a lot in, in school, um, in, in the bigger choirs and things like that, and found it very helpful for the piano, and that was kind of, um, yeah, and, yeah, if it, yeah, a again, like, don't feel like I have a particularly, particularly good voice, but can like hold the right note, and so yeah. Mm. Anyone else? Yes, Lee. Are you thinking Big Bang Theory or no. just generally? Ant-Man, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really, so the, uh, a colleague of mine in the US is the main consultant for the Marvel uh, series. Um, and so it, it, it's tricky, right? Because anytime you're trying to get across complex ideas in a simple way, uh, like there's, there's areas that might not be accurate. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I think in some ways it's good because it's 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 out there. It's like it means that people are actually, uh, you know, exposed to it and they can go out and find more if they want to. Um, it is unhelpful at times, mainly I think from the researcher's point of view who, uh, let's say, market their work based on a particular concept. So in, in my area of, of quantum communications, um, there's a particular type of protocol that you can use which has been called teleportation right and so every time someone does this it's like people are bringing star trek to life and it's like tele <laughs> right and it's 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 been the best marketing ploy ever because they every time someone does this in their field it, it goes all through the media mm. uh, they get a lot of attention and that that does translate rightly or wrongly into metrics that actually matter for people's yeah. careers yeah. um it has i mean it's there's there's some analogies there, but it's it's certainly like we're not we're not going to be transporting people around um, by teleportation, unfortunately. I should have started with no spoilers, but um, the uh, yeah no I, I think I think in 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 that respect like I think for a long time when I said like I work with quantum computing, uh, it brought to mind I, I think for Anne there's a line in the first Transformer movies where the Australian actress I can't remember her name is like oh you know they've just 
they've just infiltrated our system in two seconds using some kind of organic based like quantum computer and that for, for a lot of time and that was it like Anne told people I did <laughs> um, uh, so yeah I mean it can be it can be helpful but I, I think it's it's an entry point just like anything else I think any any popularized subject in in, in film or, or, or social media is is just the like it is simplified and probably isn't necessarily all the all the way there. Yeah. yeah. Lucky. Ooh. Um. So. This is participating in faith discussions at the university, and whether that. So it, it it doesn't come up often. Uh. And when it does come up, it, it's, it's being, it's usually generated in a setting where it's like, we are under the firm assumption here that no one would be crazy enough in this room to hold a religious point of view. Uh, and so I, I find it's not necessarily helpful in those settings to, um, to pull out my Bible and start throwing it at people. Um, you sure? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> for some people it wouldn't make any difference, yeah, that's, that's true. Right. Um, in terms of whether it'd impact my career, it, I, I'd like to say no. Like, I, I, I don't think it, it, it would in terms of, I mean, my, my thesis I and mean, my acknowledgements, which is you know, publicly available online, I have quite a clear statement about uh, how I view faith. And it's interesting, it's like it changed substantially from my honours to my PhD thesis. Mm. But um, there, are many, there are many prominent physicists in particular who who are Christians and are known to be Christians. There's some Nobel Prize winners, uh, Nobel Prize winners who are actually ordained pastors. Um, so it, it's not as, I, I don't think people are judging you based on the beliefs that you hold, because a lot of physicists hold, you know, quite terrible, you know, beliefs. Um, the, uh, I think to a large extent, you're judged on the same metrics that everyone else. Mm. Every, I think everyone in the system would be would be trying to do their best to, to, to be free of those biases, because um, otherwise you're not really <laughs> staying true to your to your actual career. Mm. Um, at at you know at a at an un unconscious bias level, like maybe it makes a difference. Um, I actually don't know how many of my colleagues know that I'm, that I'm a Christian. Certainly, there's been some people who've I've had discussions with, and they're, they're quite, like quite shocked and surprised. Mm. Um, more not not so in terms of like I can't believe that you're a Christian based on you, but more <laughs> more in, more in terms of like uh, it seems like a weird thing for a Christian to be working in a physics department. Mm. Um, yeah. Thanks. Um, I'm gonna go one more question just because I'm aware of time. So take your pick. No, we'll do both. It's okay. No, no, I'll be nice. Uh, let's go, Daniel. <laughs> so even even though the the components like let's say that I work with are very small and so you know I work with single atoms in solids a lot of the time uh, some of the implications are very large so some of the things that we we you know if 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 successful that we'd like to test are you know does quantum mechanics hold more generally Right, because like quantum mechanics is the the best tested theory that we have of how the universe works, um, but you know maybe we haven't got it completely right, and so there are ex there are experiments that we can't do at the moment that we could possibly do in the future where you could actually test, like, does quantum mechanics break if we take it into this new regime? Um, we know that quantum mechanics doesn't match up well with general relativity, which is another really well tested theory that is usually applied to describe you know how you know, the universe it formed, uh, how the galaxies move, those kind of things. And so there's, there's still this fundamental disconnect in physics between all the things that we know about atoms and subatomic particles and, you know, what we see when we look beyond the, the Earth. Um, so for me, there's, there's, there's not necessarily a, a disconnect between those two things. Because, um, yeah, understanding things that are very small can actually have tremendous impact on some of the larger scale things that we that we observe as well mm. um, certainly in terms of like having said all of that it is still be very possible to feel meaningless in a day-to-day -day thing more and more I think the impact that I have is not 
necessarily on the physics that I do, but it's on the people that I interact mm. with. Which yeah. again is not small. That's not. Uh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Last question. Uh, m maybe, sorry, can you, can you give me a little bit more on the question? Oh, uh, I see. Um, the, no, I, I mean, I, I, I guess I've always felt very comfortable in having an interpretation of the Bible uh, which is sort of context-based so creation stories aren't necessarily literal um, uh, and and while some people hold that that's th that's the case for me I was quite comfortable with things being metaphorical or, or, or representative and so from that point of view um, I'm I'm comfortable with that in terms of what the the future means and you know, the second coming and, and 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 all these kind of things, um, I yeah I, I mean there's a there's kind of the physics aspect where it's kind of like okay well if, if we just set time rolling we, we can predict what will happen to particular stars and things like this, um, but you know we you know humans will be long gone by the time most of those things happen. Uh, yeah I, I actually haven't haven't thought about how how that how that impacts yeah so the 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 end time so to speak um yeah no that's a i haven't i haven't I haven't given that any thought as i said i like i, I try like while all of these things are really interesting uh, like as i say like usually my students are like why is the laser broken like why is the um so yeah you gotta you gotta you gotta try and balance some of these things. So I, I do deliberate do deliberately tend to avoid some of these bigger questions because I like I just know for myself that it's quite easy for me to get lost in that kind of stuff. Well, I'll give you the next week to think about that ex eschatology question. Yeah, right. Okay. No, <laughs> Bring yeah. a well-formed yeah, answer next exactly. week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, John Bartholomew, I'm very grateful for you and for Anne and for Sai. I'm really grateful that you found luck and made it your home. Um, baptizing Sai with your mum was a real was a real honour for me, um, and I'm really I've, I'm really appreciative of how you have shared. Um, this part of your life this morning. Um, evidently, it's been, like, interesting because we've, we've been going for a while. Um, uh, yeah, just, just really, really grateful for you. Please express your thanks for John. Thank you.